Hi YouTube, I'm Andy Ditch here. This video is going to show you that there's no recording device, there's no threat, there's no weapon, there's no biological issues with my medical device. This is a medical device that is recognized by the Americans with Disabilities Act and the Centers of Human and Health Services, which is a federal government organization that recognizes this as a medical device for a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder that I am medically diagnosed with having. I'm not self-diagnosing myself with autism. I have it. I'm medically diagnosed. We don't have to go into whether I'm right about it or wrong, or whether the doctors who diagnose me with it are right or wrong. I'm diagnosed. This is the one I got after Erie County Medical Center threw out my weighted stuffed animal and would not return it to me in that June of 2022 visit. I believe it was 2022. Okay. It came without an eye. I could not stand it without an eye. I'm very literal, very autistic because dogs have two eyes. Okay. I can't stand it being different. I don't know why. I just am like that. I'm very literal minded. I'm inflexible. It's part of my autism. It's another example for why I have autism. So my dad got me another one because he's responsible for my money. So I get another one. And what happens? My dog Chewy chews the ear. So I wanted another one. My dad said no and I got really upset about it. Because he got me one. With a with a out of eye, he replaced that one, and I am like it's not the same. It's different now. Okay, I'm so inflexible in my thinking. I was on the phone at the time. My dog chewed it, and how upset and wanting a new one with my friend Doug Usiak. Doug said to me, "Hey, Andy, you have autism and you're different from everybody else with autism or without autism, right? Well, so is your do uh, dog different with having with uh, being without an ear. He's disabled without having an ear. He's like Andy with autism. That got me to accept this being different. Thank you, Doug. And that's also the issue of being with this. So I'm going to put the one over here. By the way, I only have one weight. The reason why I only have one weight for is because the one that I got replaced, this is what happens when you buy things on Amazon. You get things that are re returned and maybe defective and whatever else, right? So this is so the one so the one without the eye I got after ECMC bullshit. Right, their abuse and mistreatment, ne medical neglect because they want to help me my diapers. They want to give me a diaper. I kept wetting through it. I pooped myself, and they want to put a, uh, help me with a dry bed. Right, so there's that. Right, has the missing eye. Right, so I had to get this one here when Dad got me this one here. The weight that you're gonna see in a minute. One of the thing, tie down things had ripped, so I had to just use one weight, which I don't care. I can only use one of these at a time, right? I only need one. I don't need two. So this is this video is to show you that there is no recording device in there. Okay, there is a zipper that you put the pouch. That you put the weight inside the pouch and you tie it down just like a weighted blanket. Okay. So, here. We're going to go from this side here. There's nothing there. 
to indicate there's anything inside, right? There's nothing, right? There's nothing, right? And, yeah, I know this is just to show you there's nothing inside. There's no danger. There's no weapon. There's no bomb. There's no recorder. There's no camera. And even if I had a camera, you couldn't see through this material because, look, it's a solid material. It's like putting on a shirt over your camera lens. Okay. Now, pu push and squeeze. There's nothing that stands out of jabbing out, right? Yeah, nothing. You can shake it up. Nothing. The whole point is, this one right here is going in the wash. It's time for a wash. Yeah, maybe it's a little overdue for a wash. But it does, but it's not caked with poop. There's no piss in this. There's no boogers. There's no puke. There's nothing ins unsanitary about this. This one here was with my clean clothes. So, I have this with my shirts. Well, actually, my pants. My, the box for, for my pants. That's where I got this from. That's where this stays. I'm going to put this one in the wash. And I'm going to take the weight out because you can't put the weight in with the wash. Could put the weight in here, and then when this is done air drying, you say it can't be dried in the dryer. It says not to. I'm going to put that in with my pants, so I have this ready for next time, and I'm going to show you something. Okay, so I'm going to sit down to do this, but my back is absolutely killing me, and I can't really cope with my back issue. Okay, so, do you see this? These are ties. Do you honestly want to sit here and say that I, with fat, chubby fingers, which is normal, it's normal to have fat, chubby fingers and have poor muscle control and, and muscle flexibility to be able to tie something this small, right? So you can normalize that as being an excuse. Not that I have autism or a motor planning issue for my autism. But right there. This is where I'm just pointing out. This is going to be tough for me. I already have difficulty tying. And my point is. Just that. And that's where I'm going to do this. I'm going to set this down. Because I'm going to open this up. Oh by the way. I smell the gain. I use gain laundry detergent and I absolutely love the way it smells. And the one I washed like a few months ago it still smells like gain. Like you can still smell the moonlight breeze. Pretty amazing. So, that one's already untied. So when I go into CPEP next time, you have zero excuses to say that there is a biological hazard or there's a recording device in this. And you know something, ECMC, I'll bring with me, I will try to at least, I'm not going to plan going to your dump place, okay, to be misdiagnosed type of shit. But I am going to have, or try to at least, have available the document from the Health and Human Services that says that I did not have a recording device when my mom's nursing home refused to allow me in to see her because of my disability. And you guys, and the only reason why you guys claim I can't have my teddy bear for is because you don't want to accept I have autism. And you want to bully me. And because you don't want to accept that as one of my diagnoses. You can't... You're not permitted by law 
to diagnose somebody with something that they do not have symptoms of. Did I just tell you that? You can't diagnose me with autism if I don't have the symptoms of it. Okay? Period. You can't. It's unlawful. Do you hear what I just spoke to you in plain English? So if I have autism that's been diagnosed, then the legal, legally, you cannot remove that diagnosis and say I don't have it. Because it's diagnosed. It's diagnosed for a reason. I have symptoms of it. There are medical reasons that are caused by our medical conditions of mine that are caused by my autism. Okay, what's caused by my autism? Well, my expressive and receptive language disorder is one. Okay, you're going to use the excuse, well, other people, that you can have autism and not have a language disorder. Yes, you are 100% right. But I have language issues and I have difficulty expressing myself and I have difficulty with understanding another person's point of view, right? Somebody with a language impairment or language uh, expressive receptive language disorder would not would not have difficulties with understanding somebody's social behaviors or social interactions right they would know what is being what they're doing in um what they're what what another person is doing or saying right they would be able to have that shared jointed interest. They would be able to show shared jointed interest in another person. Okay? That's the difference between a, a autism and a language expressive receptive language disorder. Okay? Somebody with a language disorder is able to talk about other topics, right? Somebody with autism is fixated on one topic and is repetitive and very limited in their interest with somebody. That's a, another difference between the two. Another difference is usually when somebody who has an expressive language disorder, they're able to use gestures. They're able to use gestures to express themselves or to point to what th they want. Somebody with autism has a limited ability of doing that. And I'm having a really hard time trying to tie this on to my bear. So I'm getting a little frustrated here. So I'm not going to finish this conversation with you entirely. But here's another point. You can have auditory processing issues and not have a receptive language disorder. I get that. But I have both. And ha having the expressive receptive language disorder... The difficulty regulating my emotions because the difficulty of how I organize my thoughts. Hang on, let me just see, see, give you another example. Autism and language disorders have no co-relationship with one another. Okay? You can have a language disorder. And you can have autism without a language disorder. Okay, the point is, 
there's no need or requirement or set disability of language function to have autism. It's the shared use and understanding of the use of language. Meaning, I can repeat words, right? Everybody repeats words, so you can normalize that, right? But somebody with autism does not understand the words that they are speaking. They don't understand the meaning of each individual word by itself or how to use it. Somebody with autism is not able to understand the use of what somebody is saying of each individual word that they are saying. Somebody who has an auditory processing disorder will not be able to discriminate sounds or words to understand what's being said. Somebody with anxiety and attention deficit disorder may not pay attention to what is being said by another person. There are big differences in all that. Because I have all those symptoms. Attention, processing, sound discrimination, and difficulty understanding use of words. Okay, I am now using words and sentences that I don't really understand at all fully. But I understand it enough to be able to tell you. Because it's on my medical records and said by my doctors. And that's why I have autism. I'm repeating things I do not understand. And I get frustrated when I need help taking a shower, changing my diaper, put, getting dressed, going out in the day uh, outside, and being able to cope with my environment, being able to cook and clean and organize and take care of myself and be safe. Have a good one. Oh, an example of that is I could tell you I take Tylenol every four to six hours. But I'm unable to use that information to take my Tylenol as prescribed when I need it. That's a indicator of autism. That's one example of it. I don't have any other examples because I don't know what else to say. I don't understand what you need to know. I don't know any other examples because nobody else has pointed something out to me that I'm... Am able to repeat but not understand. Have a good one.